In the land of Skyrim, there are many Daedric princes that hold influence both big and small over the land, from Molag Bal to Meridia, and all others in between. These Daedra are also known to bestow their own artifacts to mortals they believe are worthy enough to be their own personal champions. One of these Daedric Princes is Boethia, who is my personal favorite Daedric Prince. In Boethia's quest, she will demand that you sacrifice a follower upon her altar in order to win her favor and possibly earn a Daedric Artifact. But then you are left with a difficult choice. Should you betray an unsuspecting ally upon Boethia's altar? And if so, who? There are a total of 66 followers in the game after all, so you have lots of options. Hello my fellow hirelings of House Telvani! I'm Neloth, and today I want to discuss which NPCs you should, and shouldn't, sacrifice in the quest, Boethia's Calling. Before we begin, please know that this is just my opinion, so it's completely okay to disagree with me. Additionally, Boethia has appeared as both male and female in the different Elder Scrolls games, however in this video I shall refer to her as a she, because that is how she appears in Skyrim. Hopefully she will be a he in the Elder Scrolls 6, considering Boethia has been female in both Skyrim and ESO, but now I'm just getting off track. Lastly, I will be talking about people you should and shouldn't sacrifice, so if you want to get to a specific part of the video, feel free to use the timestamps down below. So with all that being said, let us commit the ultimate betrayal on our allies that would fight and otherwise die for us. The quest of Boethia's Calling begins at level 30, when the player either reads the book Boethia's Proving, or is attacked by a cultist that carries the book. The book itself is actually quite interesting and displays the motivation of Boethia as a character. She doesn't care about useless followers worshipping, praying, and doting over her, but rather capable warriors that are self-sufficient and willing to make their own way in the world by any means necessary. Many people would immediately point the finger and say Boethia is pure evil when it comes to Daedra, but I don't think that's true, but maybe I'll save that for an entirely different video. Regardless, the book will bring the player to the Sakellum of Boethia, southeast of Windhelm, where we can see cultists of Boethia training and fighting. When speaking to the priestess of Boethia who seems to be running the show, she will say that if you wish to earn the favor of glorious Boethia, you must prove your tongue can wield a lie, and that you must bring a follower who trusts you to the altar and slay them. Now, if the only person you feel like slaying is the priestess of Boethia, you can actually slay her and the other cult members, but then Boethia will appear, taking the flesh of one of your dead victims, and will still command you to sacrifice a follower upon her altar. So now, this brings us to the topic at hand. Who exactly should and shouldn't we sacrifice? Well, it will ultimately depend on you and your character, but I would typically only prefer to sacrifice followers that are morally evil or offer no benefit to the land they live in from a lore perspective. So first, I want to go over NPCs I would argue shouldn't be sacrificed that many people end up sacrificing according to my poll and what I've seen on the internet. Sven is an option that quite a few people have chosen, and while he is an arrogant ass and, from a mechanical perspective, one of the worst followers, I don't think he should be sacrificed. Sven does actually provide a service to the town of Riverwood by playing at the Sleeping Giant Inn, taking care of his mother, and according to Feindal, working at the lumber mill, even though we never see him working there. Feindal also shouldn't be sacrificed, as he works in the lumber mill and provides the town with pelts as a hunter, but not as many people talked about him, so neither will I. Now, I don't really give a damn about these two, and they are easy to acquire and easy to sacrifice, but 
looking at the big picture, they do more good than ill, even if it is infinitesimal. Yeah, you like that I use complex words, huh? Another individual that a lot of people sacrifice is Rogi Notbeard, who is not only the worst follower in the game, but will also flee from combat during a fight. But come on, while he may not be a fighter, he is such a nice guy with a great attitude and loves talking about everyone's favorite Nordic beverage, mead. Rogi works in the mines of Kynesgrove and works closely with Dravania the Stoneweaver to make sure the mine is safe to work in. And according to Idra the Innkeeper, Rogi is also a phenomenal storyteller that keeps everyone's spirits lifted, so killing Rogi would be an absolute detriment to the community of Kynesgrove. Rogi deserves better. Unless you're playing an evil character, of course, then slaughter him however you like. Another person, or rather group in this instance, I don't think you should sacrifice are the many mercenaries that you find, typically residing in the major holds of Skyrim. And my only reasoning is that it just seems quite stupid to spend 500 gold on a follower just to kill them. You can easily just go with a follower you can acquire for free. I understand in Skyrim money doesn't really matter and most people become richer than the Black Briars by level 20, but I mean, come on, do what the 1% do and just hoard it all for yourself. Now, before discussing the people I think you should sacrifice to Boethia, I want to give an honorable mention to Adelaisa Vendici. Adelaisa is a follower you can acquire from the quest Rise in the East when you aid the East Empire Company in Windhelm. Adelaisa is not a good follower to use because her max level is 25, and also her primary skills are not that great. Her primary skills are not even combat related, and she specializes in light armor even though she wears heavy armor. The only reason I'm not putting her on the kill or do not kill section of this video is because I don't know exactly what she does for the East Empire Company or how she could potentially benefit society. She could be a high-ranking guard, but considering her class is a citizen, it's quite hard to say. After the quest, she will also mention how she's busy, but we don't know what she's busy doing. She just stands in the office all day and sometimes goes to an inn. So honestly, kill her or don't. The only reason she's in the video to begin with is because so many people chose her, so moving on. Now let's talk about the best part, who you should sacrifice and kill, cause we're all amoral psychopaths here. So first is Benor. Benor is Morthal's local tough guy that doesn't really do anything. When the player asks what he does in town, he will just say that he takes odd jobs here and there, but nothing specific or of notoriety. He also mentions how he's been asking to become a town guard in Morthal, yet he hasn't been made a guard, which brings up the question of why. There's a Talos damned civil war raging on across the land, so I'm sure the demand for capable guards is quite high. He also chickens out with the rest of the town folk when storming Movarth's lair, so he's not even that brave. Now onto Niada Stonearm. So remember when I said how I prefer to only sacrifice those who don't contribute much to the overall world? Well, that belief goes straight out the fucking window with Niada. Niada's stone arm is an arrogant and unsympathetic member of the Companions that is just a complete asshole. From the moment you join the Companions, she will state how she's so unimpressed by you, which makes sense when you're a whelp, but when you become the harbinger of the Companions, she will still disrespect and mock you, saying things like, what guidance can you offer me? Now, she is an expert in block and can train you, but there is also a master trainer of block named Chief Larrick at an orcish stronghold called Mor Kazgur, or Mor Kazgur, whatever. So it's not like you're missing out. 
Niada does offer a service to the world as a companion and instructor, but this is my video so I can break my rules whenever the fuck I like and own up to my own hypocrisy, so offer her the guidance of slaying her to Boethia's name. Rallus Sidaris is next. Rallus is a potential follower that you can acquire in Solstheim in the Dragonborn DLC. He starts off as an innocent enough excavator and will ask the player for funds to aid in his excavation of an ancient Nordic ruin to find the relics of Azadal. But the excavation keeps running into problems with dead miners killed by Draugr in the ruin, and after a tedious quest of clearing the dungeon over and over again, and a net loss of 11,000 septums, you will find out that Rallus had been possessed by the dragon priest Azadal to find and awaken him. After defeating Azadal, Rallus will awaken and beg for mercy, saying he was not in control. If you spare him, he will become another follower in the game. The extent of Rallus' possession is not completely understood, but we do know that the miners had died by Rallus' hands, and overall he has been a major disservice to Solstheim with leading many innocent miners to their deaths. The player character also had a hand in that, but let's not talk about that part. The only reason Rallus may be truly guilty is because of what he says if you decide to kill him. What? No. You can't. I have his will on my side. He will command all of us. Although this could just be him being confused after being possessed, but we'll never truly know. To be fair though, Rallus is actually a very powerful follower in the game, with having the dual flurry perk and doing extra damage, however there are many other companions that are cooler and better so you're not really missing out. You may want to go with a different follower though to sacrifice to Boethia considering how the quest to acquire Rallus is in Solstheim and how long it takes to acquire him, as well as spending, again, 11,000 septums. Second to last is Eola. Eola is a cannibal and a follower of the Daedric Prince Namira. So she already has more reason of being sacrificed than anyone else on this list because she is 100% guilty of her crimes and is an overall detriment to the world. The only reason you may not want to sacrifice Eola is because in order to acquire her as a follower, you have to eat a priest of Arche, meaning you're likely already a pretty vile character, so in that scenario you may as well sacrifice someone more innocent like Roki Knotbeard. And now for the person I think is best to sacrifice in Boethia's glorious name. This not-so-honorable title goes to... Koznak. Koznak is a porter and a drunk that is supposed to work for Arnleaf and Sons Trading Company, but never does any actual work because Forsworn get many of the shipments. Instead, he will just drink for 16 hours straight at the Silver Blood Inn. Koznak is also not a particularly useful follower, mostly because he excels at heavy armor, yet he only wears light armor unless given a heavy armor suit by the player. Now, Koznak isn't guilty of any crime, nor is he really a bad guy, but he doesn't do anything at all and doesn't offer any benefit to Markarth. Also, he is super easy to acquire as a follower, just beat him in a fist fight and drag his ass to the pillar for sacrificing. So, once you deceive and sacrifice your victim, you will be given another objective by Boethia to slay her current champion at Knife Point Ridge, which will result in acquiring the fabled Daedric artifact known as the Ebony Mail, which has the ability to silence noise from the armor and poison enemies that get too close. Truly a powerful artifact that is most effective if you want to make a melee stealth build that utilizes heavy armor as the ebony mail will muffle your movements, making the weight of all armor worn irrelevant. Once you acquire this artifact from the corpse of Boethia's previous champion, you are then named the Champion of Boethia, which 
doesn't mean much considering you are the champion of like seven other Daedra, but it's a cool title nonetheless. And that is all I wrote. A video where I talk about who you should and shouldn't sacrifice to the almighty Boethia. We are all truly showing a lack of empathy for others like the sexy master wizard Neloth himself. So with all that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, O oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.